Hey, two days ago, I've uploaded one short video, like a summary of latest leaks about alleged iPhone Ultra, where I've asked few questions about the next iteration of Apple's flagship smartphones and what could be Apple's next potential move. I know it's not common for this channel, so I'm actually making another iPhone video in a row. Let's hope it gets a wider audience. You can help though by clicking the like button. Also, you can subscribe and enable all notifications so you don't miss the next video. For those that are new, my name is Marco and this channel is all about Apple. News, leaked information, tech rumors and product reviews. One question for you. Would you buy an iPhone Ultra? Please answer in the comment section below. This video is powered by Banks. Check out their awesome accessories for iPhones, iPads, Samsung devices and much more on their website. A few months ago I reviewed Infinity Pro Magnetic Stand and I'm actively testing Urban Pro case with a keyboard. Their products are cool. Check out the link in the description and pin comment. Use digital markings 15 code and get 15% off. Now let's go. An iPhone 14 lineup was launched last September. In just short time, Apple has landed on the top spot in Q4 thanks to its Pro editions, primarily Pro Max. Not everything passed so smooth. While in some aspects, iPhone 14 performance may have been considered as mediocre, iPhone 14 Plus revived subcategory, contrary to Apple's expectations, didn't receive such a warm welcome from consumers. This model took over the spot of an iPhone 13 mini, which was already described as market failure although didn't sell as bad as devices currently replacing it. It gives the impression that Apple is struggling. Nevertheless, I believe we are not done with Plus version yet. 2023 may not be a year of big releases from Cupertino, if we exclude anticipated AR VR headset, but patching things up and filling the gaps shouldn't be a challenge for Apple. Both mainstream models, not only they look the same as its notch predecessors, but they also share identical processor if we exclude one graphics score extra. This year mainstream variants should get a 16 if Apple opts for similar strategy, making the next A17 chips once again pro exclusive. Comparable to iPhone 13, current variant, it would still be considered as an improvement. Add on top of that information from earlier leaks pointing at all four iPhones with so-called dynamic island. Will this make a difference comparable to 2022 lineup? We will know more after September. If by some reason Apple does change something this year or the one after and decides to remove the plus edition completely, three scenarios are coming to my mind. First is to bring back the mini which is less likely since previous two generations didn't prove as successful not to mention that minis are still being sold by Apple and next gen iPhone SE at one point could easily inherit its size and form factor the second option will be return to three models pattern with one non-pro iPhone and two with pro designation with a bit more value for a bit extra cash. This takes me to the story about so-called iPhone Ultra. Beside previously rumored design with rounded edges, titanium construction, dual front facing camera, this model may feature periscope shooter and may be a bit bigger display. Sadly, the information that we have is vague. Both Ming Chi Kuo and Mark Gurman have been talking about it, but it's not enough. The reasons why it's difficult to include iPhone Ultra scenario are simply the latest leaks that cleared the air a few days ago. As stated, we should not expect Ultra branding till 2024. Once we step into the next year, we may imagine change in lineup consisting of one mainstream model and three designed for professionals, with Ultra being the king for which you have to cash out seriously. We should not forget that we may also see Apple's first foldable at that time. For 2023, it's a bit more subtle projection. As I've said in my short video, I believe that Apple should work more to differentiate pros from mainstream iPhones with more value both in terms of feature and prices if necessary. Strategy with different chips within the lineup now seems okay since the stage is set and both non-pro and pro models will showcase some kind of an upgrade. It's hard to imagine that owners of the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max would care about iPhone 15 standard variants. If they do decide to treat themselves, they'll go for pros while owners of both generations 13 and 14 may give a shot to newest mainstream iPhones, since there may actually be a reason to do so. 
That's why I don't believe that current generation of mainstream iPhones is relevant as much. The problem will be if this year iteration ends up with similar results. That's bad. To be honest, I'm not buying a story with five new iPhones if sales of 15 plus fails in reaching targets. But if they do, Tim Cook will definitely want to put a hand in your pocket and see how deep it is with Ultra as the greatest and the priciest in the bunch. But if you are wondering in the meanwhile, should you purchase now one of the existing iPhone 14 models, you may go with the pros. But buying any non-professional edition seems unnecessary especially if you own version from 2020 and 2021. Of course, if you're more budget sensitive, you can always opt for more affordable options. If we are to trust predictions and everything we heard from reliable industry insiders, this September, mainstream may get something exciting, even in the form of just dynamic island and better chip. That was my little iPhone rant. I don't talk about it a lot on this channel since normally it doesn't generate a lot of views, as iPad for example, but it was kind of cool. Thank you so much for watching Digital Markings. Please subscribe and turn on all notifications. My name is Marco. Talk to you soon. Have an excellent day. Bye.